I really got interested in the seed program and the trips in general because a lot of my teammates had gone. I had gone through some more challenging aspects of my life and I just thought like I really needed that push to break through the superficial relationship that I thought I had with God and I really wanted to like dig deeper into my faith. Me and Graham, we were just chatting up with Matt Marone. He mentioned like, hey, like have you ever thought about like the Zambian trip? Like I went on it last year, it was super fun. I think it'd be a great opportunity for you. Talking to Graham, I was like, if you do it, I'll do it. I feel like everyone says, oh, they're gonna be your best friends. Like you're gonna go into this trip not knowing them and it's gonna be a crazy connection. But it was truly like, they are some of my best friends now. Some of them even feel like family. Really love the aspect of like, all the athletes, all the teams come together. We're now supporters of them, so we're showing out to swim meet or like football games or even like a cross country meet. Just building those connections were huge. You can grab lunch or coffee with them. Our group went to the beach. We'll have dinner together soon. You see them and you're like, I gotta go say hi. Mm -hmm. And then you go out of your way. I think the main thing that stood out to me about Push the Rock is just the selflessness of the people. The way that they use their life to be the hands and feet of Jesus was just so impressive to me. Their main goal was to serve us, I felt like, on the trip almost, and they were some of the most selfless and humble people I'd ever met. Facilities in general were just unreal, and I just thought it was so awesome that they have created this opportunity for those kids to be able to like thrive in their sport. I'm thankful for Sawyer for putting everything together. Um, it's truly amazing. We did sports ministry and our trip was specifically tailored to going to elementary schools and in communities with children. Soccer was definitely the main sport in Uganda, which was super cool because I'm a soccer player. It showed me that it can be the sense of communication between the two groups. Many of them did not speak English. You didn't even need to say words. You could just share in your love of God and soccer. Kids were following us right away, right away. like. You would probably have a kid on your right, kid on your left holding your hand or like trying to jump on your back. I felt like you've know, known them for so long and it's like you just met them. The prison ministry was just not what any of us expected, I don't think. We had some kind of tough looking individuals walk in and your first thought is that these are scary people that have done horrible things, but you really realize that like these are people that God has created in his own image and they cared about us so much and we're so grateful. So Christine's house is an area that women and girls will go when they've faced a lot of trauma in their lives and they may need adult figures to help support them. Sometimes you don't know how to give encouragement to someone who's been through so many terrible and difficult things that you can't even like imagine going through yourself. But the one thing that stood out to me the most was basically that regardless of what they've been through, they have this grounded and unshakable faith in God. And we would go into different communities where they had never had access to clean water. And something that I don't think anyone in our group will ever forget is just like the look on their faces when the clean water comes out of the filter. You got some water and then put some dirt in it, all this gravel, and it just came out like clear as day. Instructing these families and how they can have clean water for the rest of their lives was just life-changing. Like there's no other words to describe it. And like they're thanking us and it's like really heart-touching. It's like, man, I take this for granted a lot. I definitely had a pretty big dimension of faith in my life before the trip. However, it opened my eyes to the same God that I pray to is also the God that these people pray to and the God that loves me in America is the God that loves them in Costa Rica. It just grew my faith that God is so big and He is just so loving. Like He has so much love all over the world. Before the trip, I was still trying to figure out who I was. I didn't really know where I was at in my faith walk. Going to Zambia and then coming back definitely helped change that viewpoint. I can't really remember the song that we were singing but uh, um, I think it was Thank You God. And I was really getting into it and like opening up. I could feel myself doing that. While I was really being vulnerable with that, David, Justin, there was one more. They all came up to me and started, they put their hand on my shoulder and they just all started praying for me. And I was like, it's like wow. It's like, I'm really like starting to open up and this is God's way of like speaking to me, like I'm here for you. Like in that moment, I was like, I see this. I gotta change something when I get back. Like this is, this is the real deal. Like this is it. I gotta bring this bag with me and keep spreading it because I want everybody to feel how I'm feeling right now. A moment that I will never forget was when these two little boys came up to me and 
I gave them these little softball gloves and I showed them the ball and they had no idea what it was. I was like, we're gonna learn how to play something called softball. The first time that they caught the ball and the kid just jumps up and just like screams with delight, like I will never forget that ever. <laughs> I just thought it was really cool to see like you could just take a step back when maybe you were playing with some kids and just watch everyone. Um, and what they were doing, interacting with all the locals and all the other people that were there and kind of like growing themselves as a person. So like see all them do that and like then me being a part of it as well was really cool. As college athletes uh, at this age, it's super easy to be like, I'm too busy to go. I have other things, but I think after coming back from Costa Rica, everyone needs to go on a seed trip. I just think it's life changing. There's no downside. There's nothing like to be scared of. It is such an amazing trip. You create so many relationships. You learn so many things about yourself and about others. If you're thinking about it, there's no reason you shouldn't. You shouldn't be ashamed of like where your faith is at the moment. Like there's no faith level that you should be at. Like everyone's at different stages and everyone in our trip is on different stages. It's okay to be nervous. I was very nervous. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Make yourself uncomfortable and that's gonna build you as a person. The mission trip aspect is just really special because you're doing work, but it's, it's God's work, you're, you're God's working hands. If you're thinking about going on a seed trip, you just need to go. Do it, go for it. If you're thinking about it, do it. It was the best decision that I've ever made at Hope. God just showed himself to me in ways that I didn't even think were possible, and I made relationships that I know are gonna last me the rest of my life.